to the, the two frames of video under the microscope. Here you see something in Adam's hand. Then his hand is empty as his hands raised. They're the two frames we are dissecting tonight. Our Tara Molina joins us live from CPD's 10th district where that officer who fired the shot is based. And Tara, these frames show the split second change. Erica and Brad and this split second decision that that officer made. We brought these images to an expert today and he says these moments really only happened within a second of each other, so they're really not as separate as they may seem. Everything happens in a matter of seconds. We're focusing in on two of them with an expert, two frames of video. Watch, you see Adam Toledo running in an alley. He stops near an opening in the fence. That's the first frame. Toledo's left shoulder facing the officer, and here you see a pistol-shaped object in his right hand behind his back. Within a second, you see Toledo starts to turn to fully face the officer. And the second frame, his hands raised, they appear to be empty. This is all happening really fast. David Harris is a professor at the University of Pittsburgh School of Law. He's testified in front of Congress and has written extensively on police conduct and use of force. Those two actions come almost on top of each other. And with so many focusing on this frame, Adam's compliance, he says context and timing is important because these moments didn't look like this in real time. Nobody with their hands in the air with nothing in them is posing a threat any longer. The awful part of this is that that happened literally two seconds after he was armed. As for the officer's decision, I asked Harris about the split second choice that happened between these two frames, the shot that killed Adam Toledo. What we're seeing is a demonstration of how difficult it can be to change directions in your mind and in your body in a very rapidly evolving situation. We would all like to think that if it were us, we would have been able to stop ourselves from taking that last step. And I know that anybody in policing wants to think that they, that they would do that too. Um, but it all happened so quickly. I checked in with the Toledo family's attorneys more than once today. They have not spoken out about the video since it was released yesterday. They did talk as soon as it was released, but we haven't heard more today. They did release a statement calling for peace in Adam's name, something they have asked for since the very beginning with protests planned through tonight and through the weekend. Yes, and Tara, when their attorney spoke out yesterday, she did acknowledge the video shows he could have had a gun. She was also saying more. Erica, she did. She said that he could have had a gun. It could take a forensic analysis to tell for sure. But she also insisted Adam was in compliance. His hands were raised. And even if he did have a gun in his hand, it was before he was shot. All right, Tara Molina, thank you.